my friend, my friend. This video is for those of you who just uh, want a little bit more than 60 seconds. I know shorts are a great way to uh, get interested in something, but maybe it goes right into it just a little too fast. So if you dig this channel, you dig the way that I teach, please give a thumbs up, throw something below in the comment section and talk with some of the other people that are on the channel appropriately about music related stuff if you want to. This is an E-flat saxophone. When playing, we're gonna show a couple of the fingerings, talk about why we do stuff in theory, and then the best way to get good at practicing. So for this scale, the F major, it's like every other major Ionian mode or major scale. It has a whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, meaning two whole steps, half step, three whole steps, then the half step for resolution. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, uh, no, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. The T is my favorite. It's the seven that causes a little bit of tension. When we play this on the saxophone, the top note is going to be the highest note that we're going to be able to get besides what we can do with uh, um, our mouths and different armatures. So what we're going to talk about is how to play one, two, three, put our first finger on the bottom of the pads here to get the F note. <gasps> when we remove that finger, we get a G natural. <laughs> Removing the bottom finger of the three pads gives us an A natural. When we play our B flat, there are four ways to play it, but for the sake of today, we're going to talk about playing the first pad and then the H pad. One finger does the job. When we play a C, we're going to put our finger on the second pad of the possible ones, remembering not to hit the H pad, which I don't think you'll have an issue with. Playing a D, we throw down our octave finger and then all six pads. So you guessed it. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's a D. Removing the bottom finger here gives us an E natural. And then resolution back to the one. Now this F, when we have our finger down, makes the high up. That's an octave or a perfect eighth. When we see intervals is going all the way up, if we go another perfect eighth, we will hit the extreme on what we can hit on this instrument, which is amazing. The top of your mouth needs to be very, very, very stiff, and you need a little bit of tip in here to make a little bit of air go through the top of the fuselage, through the chamber, and into the instrument to make the high-pitched tone. You will see what I'm talking about. From low end to high end, watch what we do with the fingers. When we get to the C and we go to the D, there's no need to play the D fingers down and then the octave because that's not how we play that second octave D. We're going to be keeping the octave finger down and then playing the first palm pad. The first palm pad is the N pad, if you care. The top one is going to be the P pad and the one to the side is the N. The way at M, the way I remember it is not my problem, not in that order, not my problem, not my problem, not by your nose, my, that way, and then problem up here, NMP. I learned from the Rubank, um, Rubank books. That's just the way that we named it in there. Um, I know that different instruments have a couple different extra notes, <laughs> different things to press down to. Like uh, a lot of them don't have like F notes or F pads down here. So long story short is we're going to talk about these in, in depth in another thing, talking about what the Rubank book does. Calling this the E and this the D pad is a great idea. But when you're playing a D major, knowing that those are the two pads you, knew, you use by it is secondary nature after a certain point. In an F major, our F goes to G, to A, to B, to C, and then our top note is gonna be played with that high D. I'm gonna go through the whole thing for you. Here's where we play the octave note and our first pad for the D. When we play the second pad up here, the P pad and the first pad, the N pad plus the octave, and then we use our hand over here, which would have been covering these, to shift our elbow just ever so slightly up, we're gonna be playing the first of these three pads. These are considered the L, the K, and the J pads. So L, foot, la 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 la, or I don't know, make up your own thing for it. This is the L with those down, Top two trigger pads, the N and the P, the top octave in this, we get our E note. Make sure that we use our fingers on the thumb so you don't drop your instrument. And then the last note is the third pad. So the N, P, and M pads, all three of them, plus the octave, and then this one. I know it's a lot, but you hardly ever use this one, and when you do, you get really good at using it. It works with both the fingering and here. 
And when we throw this in here, we get the highest note. Hear the squeakiness of it? I'm gonna move my timbre back and show you what it sounds like really open and really closed. There's really a hard way to get that note to come out when you've got your lips too far around the mouthpiece. And then when you tighten down, if you're too tight, it makes it squeaky. There's a very fine, fine point. If you need, uh, watch the other videos here on how to make your uh, lips and the moisture content and how to get the reed perfectly on the mouthpiece and the whole nine yards. The thing is, you will get used to this, doing this after a certain period of time while playing these scales and understanding. The purpose of these videos to watch them the whole way through is to not understand all this, but to watch these every once in a while. Put this in a playlist and then come back to it and then see how far you've gotten. Once again, F major. <sighs> oh.